Hey guys, I'm Christina Simarelli. Welcome to my second channel, AKA my personal channel, Chris Sim. Made this a really long time ago. You probably know me from my main channel, Simarelli, the band I'm in with my sisters. On this channel, I make videos about pregnancy, eventually motherhood, motivational, inspirational stuff, marriage, and life advice. Today's video is highly requested. I asked you guys for ideas on my Instagram. The link is in my, not my bio, the description if you want to follow me on Instagram. I asked you guys for ideas and I got so many requests for this. I never would have thought of making this a video, ever. But you guys wanted to know what is it like growing up with nine younger siblings, aka there's 11 kids in my family and I'm the second oldest. I have one older brother then it's me, the oldest girl, and then nine younger siblings, five younger sisters, and four younger brothers. One older brother. Well guys, I'm here to share. I'm gonna tell you all about it. I'm gonna go through lots of different categories, and then I'm actually gonna have little tips and tricks lesson type of thing at the end where I'm gonna tell you about leadership, some things I've learned about being a leader, how to be a better leader, blah, blah, blah. Because that is another thing people ask me about a lot. So I'm trying to put like a, a lesson type of thing so we can all grow together, you know, work on our personal growth together. So that's gonna be at the end of the video. All right, guys, um, let's start with one of the easiest things to point out, chaos. There's a lot of chaos when you grow up in a family of 11 kids, 13 people, including the parents. Um, it's very chaotic, there's a lot going on at once. It's very loud, especially because a lot of my siblings are just naturally really loud people. They have really loud personalities, a lot of extroverts in my family. So very chaotic, very loud, lots of, go lots of stuff going on. Um, I learned how to get along with a lot of different personalities because my siblings are so different. That was, that was pretty cool actually. Being in the house growing up with so many different personalities, you get to see them like day in and day out, morning to night, and you really learn a lot of different personalities on a deep personal level. Um, I learned how to listen in on multiple conversations at once, so I can be hearing a couple of them and be tuning into them because that's what it's like in a household of so many kids. Um, there's just a lot of conversations at once, so I learned to like tune in to find like what's the one I want to pay attention to or get in on. And then another thing about the um, the chaos and the fast pace of this lifestyle, <laughs> eleven kids, is I learned to eat really fast. Now this is something that I regret now being pregnant. You can't see, but pregnant. Ah, oh, this gives me so much heartburn, you guys. I. Mm, I have had to really work on this, slow down my eating. So I learned to eat really fast because you know what? The food would be gone if I didn't. So what are you gonna do? You gotta hide your food. There's lots of food hiding going on. Lots of secret places in the house or the pantry. Lots of food hiding. Responsibility. Well, as the oldest girl, sometimes I even call myself the oldest. I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm the oldest in the family. I'm not because my brother sometimes he was very 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 social like more social than me he was like off with friends a lot so i was in charge a lot and i did feel like i was the oldest a lot and being the oldest girl like you're the firstborn female so that's a thing you're not the firstborn but you are a firstborn in a way okay so i had a lot of responsibility um for different things around the house and my siblings as well and a lot of things that they, my younger siblings, they didn't have those responsibilities even when they got to the same age that I was when I had those responsibilities. It's just something about being that oldest girl. You get some, you know, special privileges of having a lot of responsibility. I mean, it's great because you can learn a lot, but sometimes it's not so great. Um, I had so many younger people looking up to me at all times. So it, puts a lot of pressure on you too. Lots of responsibility to, to just think about what you're doing, more on that later. Um, even for when you're in scary situations, like something happens, like uh, something dramatic happens, uh, someone gets hurt or something happens in your family. I would have nine heads turning to me for how to react. And I would just be like, okay, remain calm. And I think this is a thing I'll talk about in leadership later on, because um, as a leader, like your tone 
um, well, your tone sets the tone, basically. If I were to freak out, they would all freak out. So I'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't freak out. So it was good in some ways because I'd learn to, um, I really learned how to be like calm in emergency situations, but it was bad because I kind of learned from myself, no one told me this, to repress my emotions and pretend that I was okay when I was not okay because I didn't want to scare them. So that's something I developed that I've been undoing since then. But you know, something scary to happen, I'd just be like, it's gonna be fine guys, we're fine. And I wouldn't realize, you know, I could do that for a kid, it's appropriate for a little kid to not tell them like adult things or things that are just way too mature for their age, but it's not healthy for me to lie to myself and say I'm fine when I'm not. Doing everything first. <sighs> sometimes I enjoy this and sometimes I hated this and still hate this. Um, I didn't have an older sister to look up to and to guide me, so I had to go through everything first and, you know, had a lot of failures, a lot of trials and tribulations where it's just like, it's just me out here. I am paving this, paving this road? Paving a road, you pave a road, yes. Blazing this trail alone. Like, I'm out here and they're all behind me looking to see what I'm doing. Hopefully I'm doing a good job. I don't really know, never done this before. No one's giving me advice on this. Those are things like um, getting braces for the first time. I was scared of that. Having friend problems when your younger siblings don't, haven't experienced that yet. Puberty, going through puberty first. Okay, that is a special kind of experience. Dating first, having a boyfriend, getting married, getting pregnant. So many questions, so many questions. The pressure to be the perfect older sister. Whew, this is a tough one. Um, there's a specific kind of pressure on the first firstborn female. Kind of like the firstborn in the family as well, that applies. Um, you have so many younger siblings looking up to you and um, it just creates a perfect environment to, to be really hard on yourself. So I was really, 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 really hard on myself. I put a lot of pressure on myself. My parents put pressure on me as well, like your siblings are looking up to, which, you know, that's that's normal. That can be healthy depending on how it is handled. Um, I was really, really hard on myself because I knew that I would see my siblings copying what I did. I think I talked about this in my um, responding to your assumptions about me video about why I don't swear, I don't use any bad language. Um, I would do things and my siblings would copy everything I did. So I would start to notice like, I don't really like seeing my younger sibling doing this thing that's not the most appropriate for their age. It may be appropriate for my age, it may not be appropriate at all, but I don't like seeing them do that. I feel guilty, I feel weird about this. Like they're doing it because I did it. I don't think I wanna do this anymore. So. It turned me into a role model, whether I liked it or not. I mean, I could say I'm not a role model, I don't care what you do, but I was a role model for them. I could try to give away that responsibility, but no matter what, my younger siblings, no matter how old they get, they're always gonna look up to me. It's just a natural thing of me being the older sister. That's not gonna be something they can really erase very easily. So it was a lot of pressure and oh, at times it would be, harder than others because I would be maybe like too controlling or too bossy about things with my siblings and I would like hurt our relationship and there'd be times when I would mess up and I'd be so ashamed and so hard on myself because I was like, oh, they're not gonna look up to me anymore if I'm not perfect. What are they gonna think of me if they know I made a mistake? They're gonna think I'm human. Part of being a good leader is, um, talk about this later. Part of being a good leader is being able to admit your flaws and your mistakes, but I'll talk about that more later. Um, so I would be really hard on myself for those things. And it, yeah, it created a lot of problems for me, just trying to be perfect. That's just something that comes with being the older sister. Um, and a lot of the, the um, values that I developed during this time of being um, a role model actually ended up being what we built 
our band, Simrelli, on. So I'm really grateful for that because I really um, take being a role model seriously. I know that whether or not I want to be a role model, people are looking up to me because I'm on the internet. And already in my life, I already am one, period, anyway. And anyone younger tends to look up to someone older. So I'm aware of that and I will take on that responsibility. I try to do it in a healthy way, not a codependent way. Things I'm working on in life. So that was a challenge. Um, leadership practice and skills. I was in charge a lot from a very, very young age. So I got to learn a lot about being a leader um, through, you know, a lot of failures and a lot of successes. Got a lot of practice. You know, it's like I'm babysitting, I'm leading a group of the kids, my siblings, in uh, doing chores or cleaning up something, whatever, it could be anything. I'm leading them in making a Mother's Day present. Could be anything. I got to practice a lot. And I'm really grateful for that because it definitely helped me develop my confidence in being a leader because I had so much practice at it. And it helped me see like what works and what doesn't work. I learned a lot about chores, taking care of a household and being a mother. So being a mother, motherly skills, I was changing diapers from a really, really young age. I got so fast at one point, I was like done so fast because I changed more diapers than most mothers who have like one or two kids will change in their whole lifetime because there were so many kids. Um, there was just an opportunity for me to just change a lot of diapers. Um, I learned how to feed a baby, burp a baby, put the baby to bed, do all those different things. A lot of things about little babies, so cute. I learned a lot of those, so now um, now that I am pregnant, there's a lot of things where I feel really confident, like, oh yeah, I'm not scared of that, I've done that, I'm not scared of that, I've done that. And I'm really grateful for that experience because I feel, um, I feel really comfortable and really confident in some of those ways. You know, can't pray for everything at all. There's a lot of things I'm scared of, but there's a lot of things I feel good about. Um, besides like, well, this kind of goes in that, um, helping kids work their fights out. There was a lot of that, refereeing, uh, disciplining. I had to discipline the children at times, you know? If I'm babysitting, you know if you're a babysitter, you have to discipline someone else's kids. Same thing happens when you have a lot of younger siblings. Um, I also learned about like making the mistake of being too rigid and seeing relationships with my siblings kind of fall apart. I learned, there's this quote, I can't remember what it's from, like a book or something, rules without relationship equals rebellion so i kind of learned if i'm just going to be bossing everyone around and like being super harsh and disciplining and i'm not gonna develop a relationship with them um to make it like a healthy situation they're going to rebel against me i learned that that was very true so instead of just bossing around developing a relationship and then giving orders direction whatever you want to say in a more kind way. Also guys, the side note, all these things are a reason that I trigger a lot of people. We all trigger different people, right? Everyone, you you know, you've meet, you meet people and you're like, that person just doesn't like me, I don't know why. Or like this kind of, this specific kind of person seems to not like me, I don't, I don't know why. I know why a lot of times I trigger people because I have really big like mother, teacher, disciplinarian, judgmental older sister energy. And so if you have one, a judgmental mother, oh my gosh, if you have one of those things in your life or you have like some problems with your mom, I can trigger the living daylights out of you. Cause it's like, ah, she's my mom, she's trying to tell me what to do. I don't really want to tell everyone what to do. I don't want to be in control of your life. But the way that I speak, just because I have been in that role for so long, um, will come across like that. Even if I'm not being judgmental, I can look like I'm being judgmental when I'm not, so. That's another story, but I just wanted to put that out there. Um, chores and taking care of a household. I learned how to do my laundry from a really young age. Some of my friends didn't learn this until they went to college. They were like, how do you do that? I'm like, I've been doing this since I was six or seven. It's not that hard to run laundry. I, I enjoyed being self-sufficient, being able to do stuff. So my mom was like, oh, you can learn how to run a load. Okay. Um, cleaning up different parts of a house. Like I learned a lot of different stuff about cleaning and helping around the house and running a household, I learned a lot of that because I got to practice some of those roles. And then cooking, I, okay, so when I was younger, I remember I started cooking when I was like five or six, I started making like cream of wheat. I remember my dad was teaching me how to make cream of wheat. Then at around six or seven, 
um, I think about which house I lived in, and this was around six or seven, I was making homemade pizzas, making the dough from scratch. My family is really big into making things from scratch. My grandma would not appreciate if I made anything from a box ever. So I almost never, I, in my life, I've almost never made anything from a box, period. It's you make it from scratch. So like pizza from a really young age, cookies, brownies, just baking, different baking situations. Um, and then pasta, and then I ended up um, helping with dinner as I got older. So I learned a lot about cooking. I was not a perfect cook at all, not perfect, but I learned a lot of stuff. And then, you know, as I got older, I learned more. And then I got to teach a lot. I love teaching. Um, so I got to teach a lot of different skills to my younger siblings um, and also like tutoring them, basically helping with school. And I ended up actually, all my jobs I had before um, being on YouTube in our band, Sim Rally, um, all my jobs were teaching jobs that I ever had from like age 12 on, I think, all teaching jobs. And that was really because I was with my siblings teaching them all this stuff that I was, I think, able to like um, develop my teaching skills. Also, I didn't even mention this at the beginning of the video, but I spent a lot more time with my siblings than the average person because I was homeschooled. Should have said that at the beginning. Homeschooled family of 11 children with my siblings all the time. So I would help them with school. I love teaching guys. So I, I loved helping them like, with their math, with their reading, whatever it was, um, and like teaching them, tutoring them basically. I loved that. I would teach them dance, gymnastics, swimming, other sports. Um, I was in a lot of sports and I really loved like coaching. Love that. So, I mean, that's why I'm a life coach. Not really. That's That goes with how I'm a life coach now, but um, as a very side job but I got to teach them a lot of different things and that was really, really fun. Um, and a lot of uh, life skills, like I said, going through all these things first, I'd be walking my sisters through these things too. So I got to teach a lot of life skills as I was learning them to a lot of younger people and I really enjoyed that. And then another thing was my confidence. My confidence was elevated from being an older sibling because for a while, a lot of my siblings acted like I knew everything, okay? Now, here's the problem with this. It makes you think that you know everything. I definitely had a problem with this for a while where I could not admit that I was wrong. It took me a while to be able to admit my flaws and admit when I was wrong about things, when I made a mistake. Now, that's something I've been working on for a really long time. Um, now, I'm pretty proud to say that I'm very, very good at that. Um, I'm really proud because I've been working in that for a while because that did not come naturally to me. I really had to work on that. I think I started working on that when I was like 18 or 19. I really started to work on that. So it's been about 10, 11 years of that. And I've gotten so much better, but that was not natural for me. If you can believe that, you can definitely, I'm sure you can believe that. So um, I had a problem thinking I knew everything for a while because my siblings acted like it, which it built my it built my confidence up. I was like, yeah, I can be a leader. I can do this. I can do that. I can try this. I can try that because I had so much support from them. They like really believed in me because your older sibling is kind of like a superhero in some ways. Like, you know, I have an older brother. I know it's like to have an older sibling, not an older sister though, but I know it's like to have one and they're kind of like a superhero. It's like, oh, they can do so many cool things that I can't do. Like they know all these new skills that I don't just because when you're growing up um, in those younger years, they're more developed than you physically, mentally, and emotionally. So they can do things that you physically like cannot do. Like it's not possible because you haven't developed that much. So when you're all like not adults yet or you all don't have developed brains yet, which we still all don't, some of them are, you know, fully developed brains under 25, whatever that is. Um, you're at a really different place than them. So they really do look up to you in that way. Um, like you can do things they can't because it's true. You can do things they can't. It's really different when your younger siblings become adults or like young adults, almost adults. It's such a weird, weird feeling. And you're, you're bigger and stronger than all of them for a while. You are the biggest and the strongest. So that is a confidence boost. So, you know, that didn't last forever. In the teen years, I would say, especially the um, the girls, my sisters, a lot of them 
they want to do the opposite of everything I believed in or thought was a good idea. And they want to rebel and test the waters of finding who they are. You know, it's natural teenage stuff, but that was a rude awakening for me. Like, oh, they don't think I know everything. Now they hate everything I say. Now if I say something, one they want to do the opposite. That was a tough time to go. Well, still go, still going through that time. Still, you know, I got lots of younger sisters still going through that time. So that's a tough one of being an older sister. That is a tough one. But you could say like, you'd say I got what was coming to me from all the years of bossing them around. But you know what? I helped a lot too. I really, really enjoyed helping them out. And I'm someone who's never gonna make you feel dumb for asking me a stupid question, whatever, because I enjoy teaching so much. If you ask me a basic question, how do I add two plus two? I will explain it to you. I will not act like you are dumb. I had some good qualities, okay? Some, I have a lot of bad ones too, a lot of flaws, but I had some good qualities as an older sister. I think I did a decent job at times. Um, so now I'm gonna get on to the leadership lessons and tips. And let me guys, let me guys, let me know if you guys um, like me doing these like lessons and tips at the end and what else you would like to learn. My nose is so runny because since I got pregnant, it's been like this whole time. Apparently it's one of those things that can happen. Anyway, um, if you like doing these lessons at the end, let me know. And I made a whole list from my Instagram of what you guys want to learn, but you can let me know in the comments if there's more stuff you'd like me to teach you just from what I have learned in my life. I do not know everything. I know some things though, and I'd like to share what I do know. So when it comes to leadership, um, I wanna start with the one I mentioned earlier. Um, about making mistakes and being able to admit your flaws and mistakes. I used to have this misconception that a lot of people do, which is people will wanna follow me if I'm perfect. People wanna follow me if I look like I know what I'm doing all the time and I always have the answer. That is not true. People wanna follow a human, not a robot. You're never gonna be a robot, it's never gonna happen. So don't hold yourself to that standard if you are trying to be a good leader. Um, admitting your flaws and your faults makes people respect you because it takes courage to admit that you don't know something, you made a wrong decision, a wrong call on something, you had a failure, something was your fault. Those things, if you could admit them, will build respect in your team for you. The same way, think about how you feel when other people do that. It feels good, it's like, oh good, pressure's not on me to be perfect because they're not perfect either. So learning how to admit your flaws and all that is a very, very important quality in a leader. Something that I had to learn the hard way, of course, like many lessons in life, I had to learn it the hard way. And I'm really glad that I did because I noticed a change in how my sisters like look up to me and how I could lead other teams better. Um, being a controlling over the top leader works really well in the short term. So you might, that might trick you and make you think it's a good idea. It's not sustainable. Long term, it normally leads to a major rebellion or a bunch of bitterness. People who don't like you or look up to you anymore or wanna be around you. I learned this one the hard way. I learned about um, different styles of leadership. My dad actually helped me out with this one. He gave me this article. I think it was from like Harvard or something. It was from some school. He gave me this article and it was like different styles of leadership. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize there were different styles of leadership. And I didn't realize when I was using, which was like, I can't remember what it was. I think it was like authoritarian. I was being so controlling basically. And I didn't realize that it would work short term, but um, it was going to lead to some really bad things. So learn about leadership styles. Um, I think if you just Google that, you could probably find them. I haven't memorized them all. I just read this whole paper and I was like, wow. I gotta change some things. Uh, learn about that and see how you can improve, which brings me to the next point, which is critique yourself. Be open to criticism. I know it's a tough one, but analyze and critique yourself and figure out um, how you can improve. Because this is something I learned from a Napoleon Hill book, The Law of Success. Um, a team is going to be a direct reflection of their leader. Now, this is a hard one because leaders, myself included, often enjoy putting down their team and thinking, oh, my team is being lazy, my team is screwing up. If only they could be as, as on top of it as me. If your team is screwing up and being lazy um, and you've been the leader of them for more than a day, 
you need to take responsibility there and realize what you have to do with it. Because often you'll look at yourself and realize, oh my gosh, I didn't give them good instruction. I wasn't clear, I wasn't organized. I've actually been kind of lazy lately and been like acting like I'm above the law and I should act like one way, but they should act a different way. If you look at yourself and you're able to accurately analyze what's going on and, and you, you often need to ask for um, feedback from other people, you can ask your team, you can ask people around you, ask mentors, whatever, ask for feedback and actually look at how you're doing that is the way to become a great leader. Otherwise, you're stuck where you are and you're never going to grow. Now, I said this earlier, um, basically how you how your tone is sets the tone, which was, which what I mean by that is set a good emotional tone for a better outcome. Um, leaders can often be really intense personalities, not all the time, but a lot of time in my case. And Sometimes we can run around like berating people. That happens sometimes. You know, they may tend to bulldoze people. I may have heard that once or twice in my life, that phrase. And when we kind of go around as the leader with this attitude that just doesn't get people motivated or excited, it might scare them. And sometimes we'll mistake fear, mistake fear for motivation i mean it is motivational but it's not healthy motivation so we'll think that's a good thing people are doing what we want they're moving fast but it's because they're scared of you which means something bad's gonna happen eventually they're gonna develop a lot of resentment for you like I, things i was saying earlier so that all earlier but um if we run around and scare people and just use this intense energy all the time it can set a really bad tone and people are not gonna enjoy working with you working for you you will have a better outcome if you can motivate people rather than scare them or like shame them. A lot of leaders, bad leaders will, people in leadership positions will shame people. That's, that's not good. But they think it, it works, it's effective. So they think it's a good thing, but it's not good. Um, analyze and observe your team and help them to see their strengths and weaknesses. So as a leader, you really need to look at the individual. You. You can't just look at the group and just treat them all the same. This is a this is a thing that goes with being a teacher as well. So if you have that skill, you'll hopefully be a good leader. Um, you need to look at them as individuals and you need to see the individual and you need to see like, oh, they respond better to this. They respond better to that. So people are so different. Learning personality types has helped me a lot. A lot of people don't like those. I have found that they have been so helpful. And I can explain that with very good evidence to back it up. Uh, well, anecdotal evidence, but it's good. Okay, I have some great logical points as well. Um, it's really helpful to get to know the individual and see what they respond to because one thing might motivate someone and really hurt someone else and vice versa. So see them as an individual, learn that. That's the that's thing you can learn learn how to see them and learn how to analyze them. That's something that I think comes naturally to me, but I really worked on developing that. I really worked hard on developing that skill. Learn how to give constructive criticism, kind feedback. Harsh feedback, once again, will build resentment. As a leader, you have to give a lot of feedback, you have to give um, critiques, but you don't need to be rude. You don't need to be a jerk. Um, when people have power, power can really corrupt a person. I mean, you guys have probably seen it in different situations in school and work, whatever. Even in situations where it seems kind of dumb, like they're a manager at this job that's not that important or high stakes or whatever you wanna say, um, prestigious, whatever but then this person is just going crazy because they are in charge of some people, four people say, um, and they're just getting their power tripping and being really, really irritating to work with. I'm sure you've all um, had experiences like that before. Power is like intoxicating and addicting and it does something to people because a lot of people are powerless in their own lives. So when they get power over other people, they're like, yes, finally my chance to feel powerful and they like drink it in. People do this in relationships too, like with a friend or a romantic relationship, they'll really enjoy controlling this other person for the reasons I said before. 
So it can be really, you know, and I'm, I'm guilty of this as well. I am, once again, not perfect. I am totally guilty of this as well. I'm checking myself all the time to be like, do not abuse your responsibility. Do not abuse your power. Do not do this to people. They are depending on you and they are trusting you. They're trusting you to be a kind leader to them. So you can be firm, you can be strong, but you need to be kind if you want people to not build resentment towards you and hate you or not wanna be around you. You gotta learn how to be kind. All right, guys, I definitely have a lot more I could go into on that, but I am going to cut this off here because I know it's getting long. Let me know, once again, if you like me doing these lessons at the end, um, comment. Follow me on Instagram if you wanna be a part of um, input for a lot of these videos. I do read all my YouTube comments, you know, on Instagram a lot. And let me know if there's any other lessons you want me to put at the end of the video. I would love to know. Subscribe if you want to follow me on my entire pregnancy journey and just get to know more about me in general in my life. And follow me on my other social media accounts if you want to. The links will be in the description as well as my website where you can book a life coaching session with me. Normally there's not life co coaching sessions available because they sell out really fast, but my email is on there somewhere and you can email me and request a certain day and time. And if you keep up with my Instagram, you'll see when I put the sessions up to be booked, I can only do a few every week. So um, they go really, really fast. Sometimes before I even post them. Wild. All right, guys, thank you for watching and good luck on your leadership journey. If that's what, if you're watching the end, you probably cared about that. Good luck with that. And I hope you grow into an amazing leader. I'll see you guys in the next video.